I'm Apostle Johnny Lee Kim. You've already got it.
go down where the stockbrokers are, the more they know about that system, the more money they make. Amen. Knowledge is what? Power. Power. Hebrews 6, 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You can be seated. Now there's something there you need to look at, okay? Now Tuesday night, of course, is our night to teach the Word of God. Sunday is the day when I get loose and get all wild and crazy. You know that. But on Tuesday night, we teach Bible. And I want to, if I can, inspire you all to try to never miss Tuesday. Amen. I love to hear the word taught. Bring me down this bench. Anyone else? Amen. We get this watch out of the way. And because as a as a baby Christian, I always had a thirst for knowledge. I mean seriously. Um, where many people had a thirst that came along with me for um, to be honest, if I'm speaking of the brothers, they wanted a wife. And the sisters wanted a husband. I wasn't, I wasn't caught up in that. I was caught up in, teach me thy word, O Lord. I didn't know, I didn't understand that his, his knowledge of his word would produce his power in my life. People, I never knew that. But I knew that there was a thirst, a hunger for the Word of God. You need that. I, I want to tell everyone in here, pray for God to give you a thirst for the truth. A thirst for the truth. For the knowledge, the knowledge of the Word of God. We know in this ministry that the Scripture says... That the scripture says that without knowledge, Satan can do what to you? I'm not quoting it. You know what it says. The prophet Hosea said what? <laughs> My people are destroyed for I want to use I want to use today's vernacular for being stupid in English. How about that? Okay, how about that? Is that all right, Jay? He says that my people, and I, I, I literally can feel that in the spirit. His people. Now, why would he? Why would God be so specific as to say my people? Because he understood that he had given us all the things we would need to be successful in any area of our lives. Yes. So what he was saying to us is a lack of knowing divine truth will leave you in a position where the enemy can attack and succeed even though the son of God has stripped him of his power he will come with schemes and use those schemes to attack trap bind even destroy I did a little sermon recently and I let you know he had turned to tricks. Remember we were talking about that. Yeah. He uses tricks now. Yeah, he, he doesn't have power. He uses tricks. Yeah. tricks uh, a good example is in the military when, when um, an army knows it is outmanned, outgunned, they turn to all types of tricks. The Viet Cong fought us and the North Vietnamese Tim remembers from underground. Yeah. 
That's right. We were bigger, stronger, smarter, and more equipped than they were. Yet, they knew the way to beat the American juggernaut is through tricks, subtlety, sneak in on them, attack and run, disappear, disappear, go in the ground. They don't know where you're at because they were little people. And it was true. It worked to some degree. It really did. It kept the war going. Satan operates the same exact way people. Now listen to what I'm saying and I'm not here to make you feel bad. He makes you stay home when knowledge is being taught. You hear what I'm saying? He causes you to find things that are more valuable to you than the words of life. Now notice what the gospel is known as the words of life. That, that doesn't mean life in the sense of I am alive. No. That means Life in the sense of all the things that pertain to life. Not just breathing, but things that makes my life better. Positive things. Successful things. This is what God says. My word, if the people take it and use it, will produce success. Success. Is that not what we strive for from little children? To be successful in things in life? Yes. Well, the Lord has given us a guarantee that His Word will not fail us if we take it and apply it. Now, notice what He says here in the book of Hebrews. We just read this here, 6, 12. He says, don't be slothful. You there with me? The word slowful is talking about a sluggish person who has no get up. Amen. You know, when it's church time, well, I'm not feeling it tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on something else tonight. You know, I got a pain in the back, a headache. Well, God said when you're sick, I have a remedy for you. He says, call for the elders of the church. Now, if God made that declaration, that means that his expectation is that you will come so that he will do the job and make you well. Amen? That's the expectation. But, but we've come to a place in society where well, I don't think most church people believe that. I don't believe they believe that. I think what has happened is we have looked at people and we have judged their spirituality. We have judged their level of faith. So we said, no, I want the apostle pray for me. Yes. Who Amen. told you my faith level was higher than anybody else? Right. Who told you that? <laughs> well, I see the Lord move. The Lord will move through you too. Amen. 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 It's, it's, just, it's just the truth. He will. Amen. Here's the problem. We, we have done, the body of Christ, have done like the Jews. They limited God and they died in the wilderness. How did they limit him? Well, first of all, on the way out of Egypt, when the Lord had given Moses a command to bring his children out, to go to Pharaoh with his brother and a stick. Stop right there. God said, go and tell the greatest leader on the face of the earth with possibly, along with the Assyrians, the greatest military machine at that time on the face of the earth, the greatest doctors and scientists at that time on the face of the earth. You take that stick, I want to put it in your head so you can get it. That stick, I'm going to say it one more time. Take that stick. Amen. Not even a live stick, little one, need a dead stick. He carried that thing for 40 years. God says, this is what I'm equipping you with. He told Moses, he said, what's that in your hand? Moses looked. God said, throw it down. Throw it down. We know the story. It turned to a snake. 
Moses ran. Took off. Moses took off running. He had to go back. God said, go take it by the tail and pick it up. God wasn't playing. He was serious. Moses, of course, fearfully reached out and grabbed it, turned back to the stick. God says, this is what I want you to use when you go to the greatest leader on this earth. But the thing about Pharaoh, he was a leader by himself. How many of you understand certain nations are ruled by devils? They're ruled by sorcery and demonic spirits. Even Castro got a little of that going on. People didn't know that. They tried to kill that dude many times and haven't succeeded because devils have protected him. How do you think many of your great uh, drug cartel leaders get away with stuff? They use sorcery too. The devil doesn't love them. He wants them to keep on killing people through their drugs. So he can bring as many people to hell with him because he knows that God has already said you're going to hell. You know, like a person with AIDS, I've heard of people um, going around giving people AIDS on purpose because they want as many as to be sick as they are. That's an evil spirit. So God says, take this stick and tell him, and get your brother and tell him, let your brother speak and you perform. Since you say you can't talk, let him talk. You operate. Isn't that something? Boy, that's powerful. I like that. See, God will take away your excuses. I'm going somewhere. We're talking about limiting God here. The church is limiting God. You know why they're limiting God? Because it's not about our buildings. That's where we are mixed up at. So caught up in, in the wrong things, the buildings, the beautiful furniture of the buildings and all this, and then there's no power. Listen, I'm going to say this, and I'm not the only preacher saying this. The majority of our churches are spiritually powerless. I don't care what denomination they are. And including the so-called great Pentecostal church. That's right. No, we're Pentecostal. I want them on TV to know that. But the problem is they're more poor costal than they are Pentecostal. Poor. Poor in spirit. Lacking of power. Runs from demons. I've seen that with my own two eyes. Run from it. People get sick. They can come up with all the remedies. You know, you get this here and put this together with this. And this will work. Instead of laying hands on the sick, that they might recover first. Come on, you. You just might as well get with me now. That's what this is all about. Limiting God. How do you think God must feel that he's empowered the church the way he has? It's in the spirit. Someone say in the spirit. In the spirit. And, and we can read it for our viewing audience that uh, Ephesians Chapter 1, verse 3, according to his divine power, it says that God hath given unto us. Wait, wait, that's Peter. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God says, everything my church needs, I have already supplied it. And, and you know what I noticed? I'm going to tell you what I noticed. Our leaders, and it's not everyone, but most. Most. And I'm not speaking of this church, I'm speaking of churches. Will not make the effort to be a God chaser. You say, well, what does a God chaser mean? Remember I read in Hebrews about being slowful. That's what this is about. Slowful is people who just come to church Go home and, and I teach you the things that it takes for you to succeed and you won't even do it. For instance, think, before you point a finger, how many of you have taken the CDs down through the years that we have taught and gone home and played them over and over until they entered into your spirit? Amen. How many have actually done that? You've been taught that for years. Why is that important? Because it causes your faith to come alive. 
it makes your faith work. It will even cause your faith to come where you don't have it in your life operating at, where it's not working at, because of the knowledge. The knowledge. We know that the scriptures are clear. Romans over here 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Of God right? Amen. We know that, don't we? But if faith comes by hearing, why are we hearing 10 hours of TV and just come to church and hear the word and won't use the CD? Amen. See, that's called slowfulness, yes. complacency, and comfortable. Yes. When you get comfortable because your job is paying good or, or, or whatever you have, maybe you have a business that's doing well, or, or you're not sick, not too sick, because you know too many black folk are full of diabetes and high blood pressures and all that, so I won't go there with you but anyway you're feeling okay the pills is keeping you feeling happy but but when you get like that it causes you to become complacent and comfortable but notice when sickness come now you want to talk to God every day every few hours you want to talk to him am I right see here's the problem to be a God chaser I learned something about Moses to be a God chaser, you have to be like Moses. I thought for years that Moses just went went down, you know, running for his life from Pharaoh. I thought he just went down here and fell over into the, the place of the Midianites among Jethro and his people. But that's not how that happened. I want you to hear this here. Moses was actually a God chaser. He spent 40 years chasing God. I thought when that bush burned, it was an accident that Moses just happened to be up there and peep and saw. No. Moses was doing everything in his power to connect with God. And you said, why? Because what I learned was that God had made him some promises already. God had made him some promises when he was in Egypt. How do we know? Because he said he thought that the Jews would understand that God would use him to deliver them from Pharaoh and Egypt. Right. Remember he said that? So, so he had heard from God and God had promised already 40 years earlier maybe that he would use him to deliver the people from all those years of slavery. So he goes out here and he decides he's going to deliver them his way. Mm. One thing about the Lord, if your destiny is to do a particular thing, you must do it the way God wants it done. And that's how it's going to work. Amen? His way. Amen? If it's not done His way, then I promise you, it will not succeed. Here's the next thing about it. When, whenever, and all of us, all of you in here, every human being in here was created for a few things. He was created for relationships. Let's get that straight before I go any further. Those of you that like to go home and don't like to be around people, I'm going to use this phrase, you out of order. Okay. okay. Amen. We were created, like it or not, by God for relationships. Amen. I know some people with I don't need nobody. Right. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you didn't need anyone, how come your lights are on in your house? Amen. You didn't go down there and make that happen. You just paid money. But someone did that. So you needed those people at the power company. I don't need nobody who put water underground and brings it into your house. Somebody, right? But we can keep this going on, can't we? I'm trying to show you something. See, it's of the devil that we separate and divide. You know why, people? Because when we come together, it makes him afraid. Because if he put a positive with a negative and the positive person is strong enough, they can break the power of the negative and cause the negative person to become positive. So he wants to keep us separated because the thing that's in you that makes you what you are is different from what's in me. So we put the two of them together and we're greater together than we are separated. Somebody say amen. That's, that's why he fights in the church to keep division in the church. Because if you get harmony in a church, 
You get a bunch of people on the same cord. We used to say one accord. And folk getting the love of God to pray like they should. And to get in the word. Listen, we will be a demon chasing, disease stumping bunch of folk. That demons won't want to have nothing to do with us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. But what is caused is caused by relationships. So don't, don't worry about what people say about you. When you are in close relationships with people, you, you, it's, it's going to happen whether you like it or not, but ignore them. Amen. Because they'll always, got, always have something to say. Yeah. I know why she with her because she got a good job. Amen. <laughs> well, if she's smart, that's a good reason to be with her. Especially if you don't have one. We start to get hungry and you can't even buy us lunch. So of course I like to be with you. See, they talk all that foolishness, but I have an antidote for that. Huh? I say I have an antidote. And, and, and some of you who act like you're 95, you need to you need to get around younger people to help you feel younger. Amen. Amen, Jake. Oh, walking with short steps. What is that about? People, we have allowed the enemy to trick us and lie to us. And the very things that God ordained, I've noticed through the years, Satan attacks it. Relationships are always under the gun. A divine relationship has been one of the most difficult to hold to. Those are relationships that the Holy Spirit put together. Amen. And those are the ones Satan attacked, talk against, and criticized, and find lies about them, you know, just said it. Well, I could, I could run with that one. Amen. They, they try to tell you, uh, uh, don't be with him. You can't trust him. <laughs> and, and, and mock it down. Everyone's destiny is connected to somebody. Yes. Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's no one that will go to and fulfill their destiny until they meet a particular person or particular group of people. It's all by God's design. Amen. I can prove it to you. It's easy to prove it. Somebody say amen. If there wasn't Goliath, there wouldn't be David. <laughs> See, all he said, nothing. What I'm saying is the notoriety and the fame that came in all the songs and all of this stuff that we read. Do you know why we have them? God ordained it, but God needed Goliath. Goliath put David on the map. He put David in the Bible as a hero of faith. Hello? Oh, he said nothing. David needed Goliath. And, and you know something else? Saul needed David. Hello. I'm going somewhere. And David needed Saul. This man caused David to run to his destiny. People attacking you and hurting you can run you to your destiny. Oh, I ain't going to get off this here. They'll cause you to run in a direction you don't even know the Lord is involved in. And you will end up in a place that looks like the wrong place. Over here in MEC. What am I doing here? I just left a, a big old church for 2,000. Well, baby, you just ran into the powerhouse. You just ran where God's got some rough folk out of drugs, out of everything possibly you can name, knocking people side the head. But one thing they know is God is still God and it ain't about them, it's about him. Come on, somebody say that. When, when you run up in a place like this where we look for miracles, we expect miracles, we let God use us. We don't come in here lifted up, not in here. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe in a people that understands that the way up is down. That once you get down, that's when God starts to motivate and to pick you up and raise you up until you hit that position that God has called you to. Does anyone else believe in that up in here? Tell somebody it is not about you. You have got to take the limit off God because whatever you thought you were, 
Whatever you were, whatever you were doing, how much you done, doesn't matter one iota to the Lord God Almighty. That does not matter to him. This is what keeps people limiting God. You're trying to live such a perfect life that your perfect works will make God move for you. Well, well, well baby, listen, and sir, I got news for you. He moved 2,000 years ago when the Lord hung his majestic head at Calvary and said, it is finished. God had already began to deposit everything we're going to ever need into the spirit. Come on, somebody. And now all you need to know is that it's yours and that you can have it. But all you need to do is come over with your faith into the spirit. Grab a hold of what he gave you and don't listen to people. They'll tell you that foolishness. Well, I got a little piece of that foolishness already. So I love the foolishness. Somebody say amen. Give God praise in here. God wants a people that comes hungry expecting the supernatural take the limits off of him. Don't limit him based on how much you pray. Some people pray a little bit and get in the prayer line and get healed. Some of you pray two or three times a day, get in the prayer line and walk away still sick. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. It's not based on how much you pray. It's not based on any of that. Some people, I know you're high holy. And you're judgmental. You're always watching people. I've had people come up to me and tell me, um, you know, it don't look good. So and so be around you too much. I got a word for you. Shut up. Amen. Right now. Because I don't listen to that. You don't know what God is doing from me to them. The things in me that must come out. Amen. Before I hit this world, they were put there. Yeah. And they've got to come out of me to the people that they belong to. Yeah. So if they get close to me, you mind your business yeah. and I'll mind mine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. When children hurt grown folks, please don't push them away. Amen. Don't push children away. Children be as suicidal as grown folks. Yeah. Yeah. There are days they feel that people don't love them right. and that people don't care and they try to reach out to adults in church and some of you don't even have time to give them a hug. Okay. I see them running up the folk. Just, Hi! They want to be hugged. Hey! You be just walking on. Amen. Take time for them. Yes. When I was a kid, my bishop took time for me. Bishop Walter Jackson. I'd come up to him or he'd walk right up, he'd walk, listen, he'd be preaching to all those folk and get out the pulpit and find that little chocolate boy and he'd walk right over to me and stand up over me. I was a little short guy most of my life. And he would laugh, he'd look at me and laugh. I mean, just literally have this big laugh. He'd go, ha, 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 ha. Then he'd say, my little deacon. He wanted me to be a deacon. I was an elementary school kid. What did I become later? Amen. You got the revelation. Didn't you? I became his deacon. Did not know that man was sent there by God for me. I did not know that. He made me feel loved. Didn't tell you my mom didn't, but it was a different love. A special love. Especially in my life when I've been called black all my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch it, cuz. <laughs> See, that, that was my first cousin yelling. He was back there, you know. <laughs> I've been called smoky, yeah. chocolate, mm -hmm. black Chinaman, oh, yes. <laughs> black Japanese. Because I had to look at the big gap and slanted eyes so I looked like a Jap to them. You know, the cartoon Japanese had the slanted eyes and the big gap. They said, boy, you look black Japanese. Japanese. And, and my bishop never saw my color. See now a lot of you looking at me saying, well you know that dark? Listen, listen. When I was growing up I stayed in the sun so much. I was sun baked and I was much darker than I am now. Am I right Tim? Well I was baked. I was baked brother. I was, man I love playing in the sun. I loved it. I used to play in the sun with no shoes on and no shirt. I love to think I was an adventurer like Tarzan swinging from trees. Yeah. And I used to be, remember, I used to be all up in the trees, man. I used to be a mess. 
come in the house about three shades blacker. Uh -huh. So when the kids saw me, hey, boy, you know you're black. No. <laughs> I don't stand the sun anymore, so I came to normal, you know. <laughs> and normal ain't right either, so you already know that. <laughs> well, I'm trying to show you. I was hurting and no one knew it. No one ever knew I was hurting. I never told my big brother, he's sitting right there, that I had the biggest brother almost in Liberty City, the one with the cap on. Yeah. He was a monster from a baby, 12 pounds. <laughs> Natural birth, please. Natural birth, 12. I wear a size 12 and a half ring on my finger. He takes my 12 ring finger ring and puts it on his pinky and it's tight. <laughs> so how do you know? Because I gave him a ring. And he, he shocked me when he took that ring and slid it on his pinky. And I got big hands. Not compared to those bear claws over there. <laughs> I'm trying to show you something here. I heard a lot, but I had courage and I would never go to him when someone older and bigger was doing things to me, and he never knew it, but they were. They wait when he wasn't around to say little slick stuff, you know, try to offend me, and little nasty stuff. I'd never walk up to him and say, they're bothering me, because I knew he could have clobbered them. Yeah. But you know, boys want to, or well, real boys, want to stand on their own two feet. Am I right? Yes, you don't want to run to your brother. You want to stand there and take that beat and he might say, well, what happened? Well, I tried anyway, brother. <laughs> you know, you want to take it like that's the way I was. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So see, God, God wants the church to be just like that. Be gallant, be vigilant and gallant. When, when Satan attack, don't let the first thing you look at is some man to help you. Yes. Turn to the Lord first. That's the first step right there. That is the first step. You see, if you're going to take the living of God, it starts with stop being slowful in prayer. Yes. Be a God chaser. Now, I'm going back to Moses. Yes. Moses chased God, and then when he was up there on that mountain taking those sheep, people did not know this here. He knew God had made him promises, but now he's old, he's 80. But he's never let go of the promise. So anytime anything he saw, a heavy wind or whatever, he thought God could be there. He looked for God. So that day when he saw that bush, it was not by accident. He said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. He turned because he knew there was something abnormal about that bush. And he wanted to know what was behind that. Why? He was a God chaser. You take it from me. David was what? A God chaser. How do we know? He played his songs. He wrote about his adventures. He wrote about his failures. He wrote about his needs for God. He put it in songs and now we today are preaching them. Amen. Why? He pursued God. He pursued him. He told us so. He told us how like the deer is thirsty for water. He said, I thirst after God the same way. That's a God chaser. He said, I pursue God. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He was talking some talk, but he did it because he never lost his passion for God. Why? Because he never put a limit on God. Do you know why he defeated the giant? Because he took the limit off God. He said, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hands. Five foot tall. What do you got? I got five rocks and a rack they call a sling. But I'm going to whip you with this because the Lord is my shepherd. And the battle does not belong to me, Goliath. The battle is the Lord's. Come on. That's where you take the limit off God right there. And you don't see the giant. You don't see the danger. But you that you serve. Come on, somebody. Give him praise and glory. Come on. That's the key. The key. Stop staring at the mountain. Stop staring at the bills. Talk to your bank account. I know somebody, the old bishop of the law. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turn the mock 11. I'm just going to do this for our TV audience. Mark 11. So let's see if that's Bible. Let's see if we're preaching here, sis. I'm tired of people preaching stuff to people and not giving them a solution to the problem. Amen. I believe that every preacher should get up and offer hope and solutions to people's problems. Amen. You don't just preach to their giants. Preach to me what to do about that giant and how to do it. Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, and the mountain is merely obstacles like bills and demons and oppressions and sicknesses, diseases, children, problems, social, all of these are, are your mountains. Jesus was speaking and, and for those who don't know this is written to the church this is not written to sinners sinners can't be partakers of this I don't care if they bought a chair in the church their name is on a window if they're not born again they're not connected to these promises you all in here so this remember is speaking to us and he's saying to us, if you say, <clears throat> whosoever means you don't have to be a preacher, you can be the deacon, the elder, or just a lay person, shall say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea. He said, now notice what he said. He's not telling you to tell your troubles to be cast in the sea. He said to you, tell your problem what you want it to become. Amen. That's what he is saying. Tell it. Tell it. Start every day. I want you to do it every day. Every type of problem you are faced with, get bold and bigoty with it. If you're a tither and you're a giver, it's no reason your money shouldn't be flowing good. No reason. No reason. Before I pastored, I'm telling all of you, I was a giver, a good giver, and I gave with joy. Amen. And I was a tither, and my money never got funny. Amen. Never. Amen. And I was the only one working, too. And it never got funny. Amen. Because this is true. This is true. Well, you couldn't get everything you wanted. Nobody else can either, unless you feel you're rich. Amen. Am I right? Because everything would mean some super big things for some of us, wouldn't it? Amen. Let's be realistic here. So Jesus says, talk to problems. That's what that means. If your finances have, listen, demons can get in, I want to get right in that camera, that brother, brother Musgrove. Demons can get in your finances yeah. and cause irreparable problems without God. Amen. They can get in your social life and cause great relationships to break up. Amen. People who are adding to you just out of the relationship, they'll destroy it because they hate that. Amen. Stop living in the natural and recognize we have a spirit world to deal with and don't fear it and talk to it all the time. Just when something seems to be messed up, then you talk to it. Amen. You can't get rebellious and start whatever, whatever. This is what you do and don't be saying this old stupid avenge you Satan. <laughs> a devil don't listen to that. You speak with authority. Amen. I bind you from over my child. I bind you from operating in my child. When you bind him, believe he is bound. And I guarantee you the story changes. I'm thinking about a situation right now that got out of control, was at the door of being a situation where a relationship was gone. Husband, wife. I got a phone call. He told her he wanted to move out. He did not want to be with her anymore. And yet I know he loved her. And she definitely loved him. And I said to her that those were spirits operating. Mm -hmm. And I said, each day you get up, you bind that spirit. Yes. She did what I told her. Right. 
She doesn't live down here. She sent me a text and said he contacted her from his job and said, there's nobody else I want to be with but you. Somebody say me. Like Teddy say, but God. See, you, you, you got to know what you're dealing with and you got to take the limit of God because what you do, you look at other folk children and, and they're in drugs and violence and all kind of stuff. And what we do is we measure our families by that unconsciously. Well, theirs are like that, but they'll come in after a while. They don't have to be like that. Even now, if you take the authority of a believer, get them demons to shut up and let them alone and let them have free will to pay what they need to pay, you'll see they'll pick God. Come on, demons affect their choices. How many of you know that's true? Amen. you got to take limits off God, people. Amen. Take the limits off God. Listen at this here. You have to find your destiny and pursue it. How do we find it? By not being complacent, by pursuing God. That's how you find your destiny. I want to say it again. You find your destiny by pursuing God. How do we pursue him? In prayer, in the word. Get in the word. I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me. This is what God considers pursuit. He said to me years ago, he said, rise up early with me and go down late with me. That means get up, pray, get up in the word, and before you go to bed, pray and get back in the word. That is a God chaser. That's a person pursuing God. And down through the day, worship him every now and then. Yes. What does worship do? It keeps you God conscious. Amen. It keeps you wanting God. You don't have to be in the car swinging at stuff. You know how some of you go to worship the swing? Oh, no, no, no. Just worship from your heart. Amen. Heartfelt worship. Someone say amen and turn on one air condition before I don't have a hissy on. <laughs> Deacon, turn on that back. Amen. I'm not one of those warm weather birds. I like cold weather. Got me a pair just popping pills. My goodness. I don't know what you all feel, but right here. <laughs> Uh -oh. And see, when I get the sweat and get the shine, <laughs> we can't get away from that. Much. We, we sweat, we can shine. Right? And that's what they used to tell me when I was a little boy. Look at Johnny, he's shining. <laughs> and he was. He's not going to lie to you. He was. He just was shiny like a reflection in a mirror. You don't want me on TV looking all sweaty, do you? It's okay on Sunday. I don't mind swinging. Sweat off my hands and your face and stuff. That one preacher, I sweated so bad I was in a revival. And that noise was so strong. You remember that Jeffrey sitting too close. And when I swung my arm, I had so much sweat running in around. It hit him right in the face. But that was annoying that sweat. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, here's the next thing you need to know. <laughs> Some people are saying, I'm waiting on the Lord. I want the children to hit it. I'm waiting on God. Listen, God will not show you your destiny until you pursue him for it. All of you who have said to me, I don't know my destiny. You are in his way. You have limited God. That's all you've done. Now, start to pray day and night until he show it to you. Amen. Once he show it to you, pursue it, and it may be a great vision that God has for you. But don't panic. Don't fall out over it. Say, how, Lord, how? If he gave it to you, he will equip you to get there. Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. He will do that. I heard this in my spirit. Some of you, God, have equipped to be business people, entrepreneurs. But you're sitting back saying, it's too much work. And you know that you want to have a business. But I don't feel like running. And you're lazy. <laughs> you're just lazy. And complacent. Time to get away from that. Moses pursued God. You know what? It took. Let me say this. Thank you, Lord, for bringing it back. It takes a while when you pursue God for your destiny to know it. 
It is not going to be, I'm fasting this week and I got it. He won't let it be that way. He will not let it be that way. I'm going to show you a verse of scripture, prove something to you. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 6. Let, let me show you this. If you're going to take the limit of God, you're going to get rid of laziness, complacency, and you are going to pursue him. Amen. Because laziness, complacency limits God. And being in a comfort zone, that limits him. Mark 6, 48. Let's make it 45 and I'll read into 48. Straightway, it said, and straightway he, that's Jesus, constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto the Vesta, while, I'm sorry, that Satan, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. Now they was going over, remember that. And a storm came, and it said he was alone on the land after he had prayed and sent the people away. And he saw them from a distance because he was on a mountain, toiling, rowing out there in the Galilean sea is where they were. He said the wind was contrary unto them. About the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and watch this, would have passed by them. Now, I read that for years, and it didn't make sense to me. Why would he go to them and walk by them? And don't give me that story. He didn't see them. He saw them from the mountain. I know he could see them walking that close. It's, it's, a, it's a message here. It's a revelation here that God wants to give to the church. And, and that's what I want you to see. They had to call upon him to come in before he came in. You got that? Mm -hmm. They had to call upon him. The scripture said, when you call me, I'll answer you. Amen. That's Bible. Amen. God comes to no one who does not pursue and call him. Amen. In the Old Testament, he was the same way. Nations would conquer Israel because of their disobedience, their idolatry, and rebellion. And God was sent there for a hundred years of need being allowed. They were slaves to other countries. But when a group started praying and calling him to come, he showed up. Yes. Many of you say, I need the Lord, but I'm waiting on him. Do you know what the scripture means where it says, wait upon the Lord? It doesn't mean sit down, be lazy, and do all kinds of carnal things and come to church once a week and think you've done your job to the Lord. Yeah. Don't feel bad because I said that, but it's yeah. just the truth. Yeah. It's only the truth. I don't have enough Jesus to come once a week. I need to be in God's presence, honey. I'm sorry. I need the word to either go out of me or come to me. I'm so sorry for those that don't think you need that. Okay? But it's necessary. God shows up when you call out. That is a spiritual principle, a spiritual law. All the years that Israel called, he never came until the nation saw they needed him and called out. Then he showed up and changed everything. Who in here believes you can take the limit off of him? I'm telling you, we, we could have success. God, 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 listen, mark it down. God built us in the church, saved us in the church for success. You know what success is? If, if, you don't have to be called to be a preacher. Success means to make an impact on others. God called us to make impacts on others. Not negative impacts, but positive impacts. Don't be a person that carry negative impacts. Amen. Let your impact be positive. Yes. If you can't find something positive to say about a man, don't say that. I, I want you to practice that, okay? Yes. Really practice that. Because all of us have messed up in something. Yes. Maybe not the same, but something. Yes. Now don't sit here and be all high holy now. Yes. <laughs> 
Whatever you messed up in may be different from his or mine or hers, but something, somewhere, because our bodies, our bodies are not perfect. And these things will do what they want to do if they're influenced by the devil yes. or an unregenerate soul. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, because what did I tell you? The flesh is amoral. It obeys the devil, you, God, or your unregenerate soul when your soul is not renewed. Yes. I said soul, not spirit. Now. <laughs> what you mean, soul? I mean, God don't save souls. He saves spirits. Amen. Your soul is unrenewed and you have to work on it every day. And the way you do that is by meditating the word of God daily. Get over here and read this stuff and meditate. Here's another thing. Imagination. To be successful, start imagining you have certain things you've been pursuing God for. Imagine you have it every day. I know you know how to have an imagination because before we got saved, we had some seriously bad imagination. Yeah. Am I right, Big Jack? Yes, we did. Mine was off the scale. Scale of 1 to 10, I had 15. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And so I know about imagination. Do you know imaginations can lead you to that what you're imagining? Uh huh. Come on, imaginations. People imagine building great buildings, but they didn't have the know-how, but they kept imagining, and soon God dropped in them the know-how because they kept imagining. Y'all ain't saying very much up in here. Imaginations are powerful. That's why the Bible simply says that we should cast down certain imaginations. Amen. Remember that? Amen. They're called reasonings. He said, and bring into captivity those reasonings or those imaginations that are in line with the word of God. Amen. Well, for me to be successful as a, as a minister, to see the sick healed on a higher level, that's what I want. I, want, I don't want to be in no cathedral out here with prayer lines around the outdoors. No, I don't want that. Amen, okay. amen. Too late in the years for that. <laughs> we did that early. Amen. Prayer lines on that wall. In fact, that, that wall could talk. Amen. Amen. You all remember that? For those that were here? Yes. Prayer line to the wall. Pray it out, cast devils out, and the prayer line will line back up again. Yes. Yes. And I just got to preaching a sermon and sweat is running all in my eyeballs and I'm wiping it out. And they didn't have any mercy on me. Nope. Just kept lining up. Amen. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Look back again the third time, the wall again. Yes, That's right. Getting the healed devils out. Yeah. My question is, where are most of them now? Amen. He'll be back. Adios, hasta luego. That's right, that's where they are. Mm -hmm. I have some pillows here that God placed here. That's why you are here. You are part of the destiny of this church. This church has just recently Come in line, you don't know what I'm speaking about, but I know. Come in line where God wanted it at. We was kind of to the right of the line. And we've come in line. Amen. We are a soul-saving ministry. Amen. A ministry that heals the sick. And people say, well, God did that, y'all. Listen, numb nuts, listen, listen at me. You listen at me. Everything we do, God does it through us. Amen. You understand that? There's no nuts up here. Amen. Nutty. Amen. Why are you always trying to spiritualize everything? Amen. Being so specific. The thing you need to be specific about is stop criticizing, finding fault, and get your life online where God can use you. Amen. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. So quick. Uh, I've seen some things I got to stop. I've seen some things where, where preachers dress up and, and, and people see them and go to criticizing the man because he's too dressed up. Man, what is that? I don't understand. Maybe some of you can help me. Yeah. These entertainers, 
and come out on the red carpet <laughs> in ten thousand dollar dresses that don't yeah. look like nothing Amen. and you're praising them yeah. and all they're doing is serving satan but when the preacher man dresses up and looks like royalty he's proud he looks worldly yeah. oh how silly of the devil made the church book you know what if you're going to provoke the world you cannot provoke them looking like a Sally down in the alley and I'm a gym when they didn't have a drink. You cannot provoke them. But, but do you know what provokes the world? Can I tell you what provokes the world? When they see you come in here looking like you are royalty and driving something is old, is fixed up, clean, washed, and looks like you care. And then if they pass your house, your yard is not standing three foot high and the paint peeling off the wall, but they see royalty in everything you got. That will provoke them and they'll say, that's a prosperous woman right there. Hello? Jesus had sense enough to show us that when he put on a robe that was woven without seam, and they, the soldiers, instead of carrying it, they cast lots to see who would get it. You know why? He wore the best shoes, Roman shoes, hello. He wore the best clothes and had women that were financing his ministry who was working for Herod. Amen. And then we get over here and play the poor man's game, thinking that's safe and holy. Oh. No, that's silly. <laughs> that's dumb. Amen. Hello? Amen. Any of you ever gone places and have people ask you, why do you dress like that all the time? Any of you? Yeah. Thank you. Amen. So imagine. That's right. <laughs> Often. You know why? I represent Jesus. Amen. 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 And when I go, people say, why do you wear a coat all the time? Is you a preacher? Coat don't make me a preacher. Biggest demons in the world wear coats. Amen. Al Capone wore a coat. Yeah. You know, he's saying, and the mafia always had on suits. Yeah. So it ain't about the clothes. No, no. See, what they don't understand, they're sensing the anointing on us. They sense it, but they don't understand what it is, so they are drawn to us by the anointing. So because they don't know nothing else to figure, they say, well, why do you dress like that? Exactly. What they need to say is something drew me to you. But then I notice you're always so well dressed, groomed, smelling good, hair cut. Well, you know, if you got any, it's cut. But you know how that goes. Some of the brothers ain't got to do much cut. Somebody say amen. amen. Take, take, take the limit off God. Turn to someone and say, we just began. Take the limit off God. I got two more things to say. The reason David was able to succeed David from a child took the limit off God and the reason we know he tackled a lion and he tackled a bear You know why he tackled them if you study he didn't go after the lion and the bear because he thought He was powerful enough as a five-foot-tall Maybe 17 year old he did it because his trust was in God And he the Jews see they make their kids learn about God. They make them read from 12 years old and study God. So David read where God said your enemy will come upon you one way and I'll cause him to flee. Come up there trying to dispel what David and others did in the Bible and scientifically disprove the Bible. And I listen to them and I'm sorry I just have to speak out in my house. I say shut up. I do. I talk to people. I say shut up. I tell them, I say, you're so stupid, you're dumb. You don't understand nothing. It's supernatural. That's right. They even caught that bear and wore him out. And I guarantee you, he skinned him and took the skin home. That's how you had to do a bear. You could sleep on that stuff, girl. You kill a bear and leave him. Skin him. Take him home. Show people what God did through you. <laughs> You'll be a demon spirit, so you can't take them home. You can't take them home, sister. You can't stay around telling kids, get the step in. <laughs> I don't want you to be in my house. 
Ghost. Can someone say amen? amen. Can, I, can I help you to take the limit off God? Take it off. Take it off. Amen. We're going to close this out. We're going to come back. I have many things to say about this. And you know when I get on a series, I go, right? Okay, we're going to keep hammering and showing you things to help you that when problems arise, you can be like David. I'm not looking at the problem. I'm looking at the promise. The promise is greater than the problem. Amen. Moses lived on what? The promise. Amen. Come on, deacons. We're going to start with the offering. Thank God for the teens being back there. Don't they look good sitting back there? Let's give the teens a hand. I was going to tell you that cameraman shine that, that camera. You all look at the camera. Devin, you all look at the camera. He is putting the camera on you all. I don't think you all got a record. That's why you're looking away from the camera. Look at the camera. Thank you. 